Well, good morning, everybody. Darren Saul here, your host of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. It's Wednesday morning. I had to think for a second. Time is flying. And I have the amazing Prosper Taruvinga in the studio today. How are you doing, Prosper? Darren, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me on your show today. Right, my pleasure. We're going to be getting into all sorts of great stuff. And in particular, how to build a personal brand that establishes you as a thought leader. So for everybody that, who doesn't know who Prosper is, Prosper Taravinga is the father of two beautiful girls and a husband to the most amazing wife. He is a search engine optimization expert by day and digital marketer and online consultant by night. He works with clients to raise brand awareness, generate leads, and find new customers. Through quick and straightforward changes to a website, he can dramatically improve the visibility of an organization on search engines on, in any industry. Prosper is the guy you call when you're tired of thinking small. Prosper, how you doing, my man? Welcome to the show. Fantastic. I was listening to you read that and I was wondering, who are they talking about? And then it <laughs> <laughs> it just dawned on me that that was <laughs> uh, <What are> you? <laughs> fantastic. Thank you so much for that. My pleasure. And then Prosper, tell us a bit more about you that I didn't cover. I'd love to hear a bit more about your story and then we'll jump into some, um, you know, nitty gritty into this topic. Absolutely. So you need to tell me how long we've got on this show. First uh, of right. We've got 45 minutes, an hour, if you like, as long as you do. <laughs> Great stuff. So obviously, um, I don't know, I was born in Zimbabwe. Do you know where that is? Of course. Fantastic. So having been born in Zimbabwe, um, I came across to Australia almost nine years ago, yep. um, you know, just really looking for greener pastures. Okay. Yep. Nice. So my journey to Australia just pretty much started, um, you know, with me having met a teacher that came to Africa while, when I was 13 years old. That and right? when that yeah. And when that teacher showed me her personal brand, I mirrored that. And I really wanted to be somebody who can travel the world and help other people be, do and have a happier existence. Wow. So tell us a bit more about that. What did she do? What was her personal brand? Because that inspired you. I'd love to hear more about it. Great stuff. So you know what I mean? So they are those teachers without borders that go yep. to impoverished places and then they can maybe teach either maths or science yep. or some other technical subject. Nice. So she was a math teacher. And when she came around, um, you know, we, we really did not have any role models. I mean, the people we had around us were, um, you know, local leaders and yep. all you just really were growing up to be was to be a uh, a family person and then just get a job and then nothing worldly. Yeah. So when she came around, um, I think she was about 27 at that time and I was 13 and I thought, wait a minute, yeah. if I could travel the world, see more places while doing what I love, that, that could make a difference in my life. And I just, my GPS and my worldview changed from that point. And I started doing everything that she was telling us to do because, you know, if you model somebody who's got success, yep. guess what? You, it rubs off on you. And uh, eventually, you know, she was telling us all about Australia, Melbourne and everything else. So that painted a picture of what this place was. And now, you know, maybe 20, 30 years later, here I am. Wow. So, and so then... When you first met her, what, what steps did you put in place to make sure you are going to be, you're going to achieve that goal and you're going to go on that journey? Okay. First of all, I was a teenager. I was 13. It was just hormones. You know, she was pretty, that was the first thing I was like, maybe there's pretty girls out there. I, <laughs> <laughs> but, but pretty much what she, she, she lived a different life to what we, we lived. She had different ways of speaking and and my english was really modeled around her accent and 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 how the slang was all about so it was fascinating wow. you can imagine she was white we were yeah. little yeah. black kids and yeah. that was probably the first white person we had seen in, in you know in close proximity and yeah. having to learn she telling us her stories and knowing that there was life outside of where we were living just yeah that gave me a lot of hope that right. gave me a lot of inspiration that way I was, was temporary. Yep. Okay. If I was not doing or being or experiencing a life that I wanted, then I could leave. I was not a tree. I so 
those, all of those sub, 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 subliminal messages were being imparted by our experience with that teacher. And guess what? She was only there for three months. Wow. But the impact, the impact of her presence lasted a lifetime. And here we are now. Man, that, I love that kind of a story. And so did you, did you start studying there or did you come out to Australia as soon as you could? Or how, did you, how did you go about that? Great stuff. So I started perfecting my English so yeah. that I could be picked on in class, yeah. you know, and then I could talk to the teacher. Nice. I also started making sure I was good in maths because she was a maths teacher and nice. I would go in, ask questions just, just to be close. Yeah. Um, I've heard Tony Robbins talk about it. It's called touching the hem. You yeah. know, when, <laughs> when Jesus was walking about, people just wanted to touch the hem and they yeah. felt blessed, right? So that's what I was, I was really doing. What, whatever her energy, her experience, yeah. I wanted to milk it. I wanted to learn it. I wanted yeah. to be that, be that yeah. person that can travel the world and do whatever I felt, um, you know, was, was, was a good thing. And she said one thing, right, which then planted the seed. She said, if ever any one of you kids are in Melbourne, come and have a cup with me. Wow. That became the fire that <laughs> in my belly that I want to have that cuppa with, um, with my teacher wow. whenever that was. And that now became the, um, you know, the, the, the uh, what would you call it? Like, the, that was your, your heat seeking missile. That was the heat that seeking was it. missile. You, that right? was your, that was the aim. Then you didn't deviate. That cup of tea. And guess what? And you had the cup of tea. <laughs> I'm enjoying one right now with you. So, but did you have a cup of tea with her when you came? We, we had a moment. Um, it was a televised moment, so nice. to speak. I don't know if you've seen, even Carl Stevanovich was part of the whole, um, you know, the whole story. So she's still a teacher yeah. in, in Northern Territory. So oh, that's wow. a personal brand. Wow. All right. Yep. And it was so difficult to find out who she is because she's not one of those people that says, look at me, which is yeah. what a personal brand has to be because yeah, yeah. you have to be known for yes. something. And, yeah. and those people that knew who she was then pointed us towards, um, you know, where, where to find her. So yeah. she's still a teacher. And we, wow. went, we went there and um, basically we, we met. And, 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 and when we met, she had photos that she was taking of all the young kids. And that was a surreal moment because I never knew what I looked like back then because we didn't have any cameras. Yeah. So she had all those memories. She pieced together that whole time that I was really trying for me. And, 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 and it all, you know, uh, started making, you know take, taking that's, shape. That's phenomenal because you have a teacher like that that is traveling around the world and she's leaving an impact on so many different kids. But for you, that teacher was everything. And that, gen that dri drove your whole voyage and your whole purpose in life until you realized it and you went and you had your moment with her. So what a fantastic story. Absolutely, absolutely. And the one thing about it is you never know who you're impacting. You doing this podcast right now. You That's never right. know Sally, um, who is probably 13 right now, yep. would be listening to this a little bit later yep. on. And whatever we are doing with our brands, you know, is going to give somebody the hope to actually be doing, have a, a happier existence. So Absolutely. on behalf of the whole world right now, I thank you, Darren, for putting out content that's going to help somebody be doing, have a happier existence. Oh, thank you, mate. And I hope that people out there that are listening to this can be inspired by Prosper's story and learn about the drive that, that it takes to achieve your goal and actually succeed and look where he is now. So anybody can do it. You just have to put your mind to it. So Absolutely. That's, mate, that's fantastic for you. So Prosper, tell us a bit more about, you know, what you do, because you, you work as a digital guy, you work as an SEO guy, you're in marketing, and then we're going to get into more detail about building brands. Absolutely. So, so generally what I do is help businesses get found on Google. Right. All right. Every single day we are, our customers are searching for products online. Okay. The first place they go to is type into Google, find out if somebody's doing it in their local area. The results that everybody finds, yep. right, are not created or they are just curated by Google, right. but they are influenced by the content and the actions of people like myself behind the scenes. Right. All right. Yep. So basically we help small to medium businesses get customers 
for the products or services that they're selling every single day. Perfect. Love it. And so you have your own agency and I've, you work just by yourself or do you have a, a team as well? Great stuff. So I lead a team of 12. Wow. Very well, competent, um, you know, uh, digital marketers out there and they literally have all the work in their hands. Okay? okay. So each and every one of them is specialized in their small little area. The yep. reason being the field that we're in is always and constantly changing. Yes. The algorithms are always changing. And yep. in my area, if you're working and operating by yourself, you literally are either doing too much yep. or just dabbling on a few other things because you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands full. Very true. Very true. And so how do you keep up with all these changes with the algorithms? That, you know, how do you keep up with this stuff? Great stuff. We don't. <laughs> 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 all right. What, what, what I'm trying to say is everything can change. Um, you know, platforms can change, but a lot of things remain constant. Yes. That is your brand, your message, who you're talking to yep. and how you reach out to them. Beautiful. The rest of the world can be dancing, can be doing whatever they can be. But if your message is aligned to a market, yep. whatever media of that particular time and era can be used to reach that market with that message. Beautiful, so, man. Love it. No, no, continue, continue. Absolutely. So, so a lot of people get caught up in the media side of things. Yep. Yep. All right. And the media is always changing. I will give you a specific example. Yeah. Uh, I think about four or five years ago, we saw the biggest media heist of our lifetime. Facebook literally ripped off what Snapchat had built to create. Yep. All right. And they put it into their network, into their ecosystem. That became the stories. On Facebook, that became the stories yep. on Instagram. And two months or, or, or not so long ago, LinkedIn jumped on the bandwagon and they're doing the same now. Yes, they are. Absolutely. So, so media can constantly evolve and morph itself. But all of those channels are designed so that you get a connection to who your audience is with a specific message. And that's what a personal brand now become i love it so what you're saying is and you're a man after my own heart because we both are passionate about marketing so what you're saying is algorithms might change platforms might change but it's how you react to them that's important but all in more and more so it's how you build your brand in the first place that drives the awareness on whatever happens with those platforms Great stuff. Let's use a real world example so that this yep. actually sinks in. Good. Um, what's the message for Nike? Just do it. Right. Great stuff. You didn't even have to think about that, right? Absolutely. Like, great stuff. And um, what's the message for maybe McDonald's? Oh, what is the message for McDonald's? The message for McDonald's is just uh, we're always open and you know we're always fast food. Absolutely. So it's, it's, I'm loving it. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah, I'm loving it. And then that's how it goes. So each and every one of these brands have maintained the same message. Yeah. Nike, when they sort of started, it was through billboards. It was through, um, um, you know, that was a media. It was through newspapers. Yep. The message was still the same. The market was still the same. Sally or Jane or Darren or Prosper, who wants to get up and jump? and go and do something, yep. your, your wardrobe is talking to you, yep. right? Oh, I don't feel like running today. You look at my <laughs> oh, just do it, yep. all right? Do it. That's, that's the medium of their message. They haven't taken out a Facebook ad. They haven't podcasted about that. That's they true. haven't put out a, a tweet or a TikTok or whatever it is. It has just been a message that has been translated to us through various mediums. And it depends on how we consume that message yep. that makes it real to us. Yep. And, so, it's, and it's consistent. And, and it's, it's consistent. consistent as hell. Absolutely. So yep. consistency is, is one of the cornerstones for you crafting a message that people will seek you out for yep. in times when, you know, there's a me too brand out there that, doesn't resonate with what, what they're going through. Perfect, perfect. And this is a great um, place for a question because people are always asking me, what's more important, a personal brand or a company brand? If you take Nike or you take Coca-Cola 
or you take McDonald's. We don't know necessarily who the person is behind the brand. We just know the actual company brand and the tagline. But there are other people that have been building brands that are very strong personal brands. So tell us about the difference between the two and what, what we need to do. Absolutely. And that's a very, very good question because I'm of the notion that people buy from people. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a company or corporate brand, there are still people driving that brand. They might just not want to be known or might want to put themselves out there. Right. So whatever we do from a grassroots level, it stems from people. Yes. Now, some people are really, really good and extroverted enough to lead a company in such a way that they become the face of the brand. And some people might have a team and collaborators that they work with, which basically would mean that that name of that brand gains trust within the marketplace. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you look at my fingers right now, no two fingers on the same hand are of the same height. That's right. Some people are really good and can maintain who they are, their stature, their poise, and, you know, their message. You know, we know of the, the Richard Bransons of the world. We know of the Elon Musks of the world. We know of the... Um, um, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs of the yeah. world. You know, I was going for Apple with that. Apple simultaneously built two brands at the same time. That's the right. Apple yeah. brand yeah. and the Steve Jobs brand. Good point. I like that. Uh, you know, so half of the time I was actually listening and thinking um, the, the, the new guy with Apple, what's his name? Um, yeah, you know what? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't even know. That's the point that I wanted to yep. go. With, all right. So it depends on the time, the lay of the land, what's important and what's actually happening in your platform. Yep. Because there's people like um, Richard Brunson who can be found in airlines, who can be found in railway lines, who can be found in record stores, in gymnasiums, in anything. Any, anything goes as long as his name is there because we bought into the person that and his values and who and what he represents. Yep. All right. And some people are not that dynamic. They could try and be something and, 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 and half the thing fails. Right. So look at who you are, what your message is and what your market is responding to. No, there's no correct answer to this. Some people are just born wild yep. that, you know, you give them anything, they go with it. Yep. All right. And then there are some brands that only last a certain period. Let's look at Hussein Bolt yep. for a minute. Yep. Okay. Hussein Bolt is known for... He's, um, he's, he's an athlete, right? He's the fastest runner, broke all the records and everything else. That was nice and good, but where is he now? Now he's, in the, he's doing the telco ads, isn't he? He just based on who he created elsewhere. Gotcha. So some, some businesses have a lifespan. Yep. So you might be known right now for creating face masks, but in the next three months, they're probably not going to be needed. Yep. All right? So if that's who you come out as then we basically put you in that little box. Yep. Don't get me wrong. People are always judging a person because if we took in all the information that is happening around us, we wouldn't function. So That's we right. like to place people in little categories so we can pull them when yep. we're looking for um, you know, a, a, an optometrist. We yep. want to pull them when we're looking for a podcast host. We want to pull them when we're looking for an SEO person. Just so that the way we deal with the world is... Um, Very compartmentalized, and, compartmentalized. And, we, and we need to do things fast. And we, you know, we allocate things in that way because we don't have the time to really dive into every story to the nth degree. Absolutely. Right. So back in the day, this whole personal branding thing did not start now because of the internet or something like that. Right. You've probably come across names like Carpenter... Um, names like Baker, Cheeseman, Spicer, right. Kuka, Fisher, Ch Shepard, Carter, Clark, Skeena, Gardner. All of those were personal brands. Yep. That's how these people were known by their name or their job. Exactly. Okay, So if it was just down the road, that's where Carter lives. 
Yeah. And if it was just down the road, somebody who sold products was called a hawk now because yeah. he was hawking products. Yeah. You know, somebody um, who, who, you know, people called Baxter, I think yeah. it's because they're a brewer or something like that. Yeah. And or, uh, or blacksmith or baker blacksmith. or whatever. Exactly. And there's people called wheat bread or white bread because <laughs> back in the time, yeah. refined flour was only for rich people. Yeah. Or barber. So that, I've heard of barbers as well. Absolutely. You know, Baba. So when you look at things like that, people are always seeking ways to make sense of the world around them. Yeah. So it is our duty as business people to give them something to go on with. I want to ask you something. Have, have, has anybody ever questioned you if you tell them, hi, my name is Darren Saul. Has anybody ever questioned you? Nah, I don't think you're a Darren. I want to call you a a Simon, because you do look like a Simon. Gotcha. Well, I've been called many things in my life, but nobody's <laughs> questioned my name is Darren Saul. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. So if you, you know, all right. So if you're yeah, going to any authorities, they just say first name, Darren. They don't ask. Uh, yeah, nah, I think show, me the, show me your ID. No. Nah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's exactly what, how we present ourselves as business people, um, you know, to, to the world. Yeah. So you give people ammunition and information on how they can compartmentalize you. Yeah. Yeah. So, what you're, yeah. so what you're saying is yes. you are creating the perception of you that people, that you want people to have. Absolutely. You give people an ammunition. You give people a, a point of reference yeah. of how they can address you, how they can refer to you and how people can distinguish you from anybody else who's pretty much doing the same thing you are doing in the world. Perfect. And then obviously if you are a person that can build a strong personal brand and you're comfortable with that, go for it. If you don't, if you're not, you can build a company brand, but if you maybe can do both, you can do both. There's world life. There's world examples of all of that happening. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I mean? Some people are really born with the tenacity and the person, you know, the personality to really pull through a brand through different sectors. You know, let's take Elon Musk, for example. He started off with PayPal. You know that, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. I did hear that. Yes, I did. Exactly. And then when that time phased, all right, and when that time finished, he sold it, moved on to, um, I think he then moved on to Tesla and now, you know, space yep. and, you know, he's also doing solar, all of those things because he's got the energy and he's got the self belief yep. that he can one. do it. That's a big point right there. All right. I, I had to repeat that the self belief, because sometimes you might think you're good at something, but if you don't have the personal belief that I can pull it through, yep. Grand opening, grand closing. Yep. You got right. to, to have that belief and you got to keep moving forward regardless of what anybody else thinks. And you know that you will achieve it when the time is right, but you can't give up. Absolutely. You see, there's a lot of people that I think you would have seen this um, post when people are saying when Beyonce or Rihanna starts a, a, a lipstick brand, you know, everybody flocks to it when, um, um, I don't know, any, anybody who's a celebrity who's well-known starts a business. But when your friends start a business, nobody buys it. Do you know why that is? Because they don't have a strong enough brand yet. You don't have a brand. You, you haven't had any wins on the board. Mm -hmm. And your friends do not want to get disappointed and in turn disappoint you yep. if they don't like what you've got to, 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 to sell. Exactly. So it is your, the onus is on you to prove yourself to anybody else around you, then they can be your advocate. But you do that by having created a lasting brand that people can stand behind. Absolutely. And, and you have to do the work and build that brand. So let's chat about how do we actually do that? How, what's the best way or some of the great ways to create a strong brand? Great stuff. A lot of us jump onto the next shiny object but nobody takes time to really look at what they actually value mm -hmm. because we always resonate and gravitate towards our highest values, no matter what. It could be the perfect time to be doing podcasts, but if you're not a speaker, 
Yep. If you're not somebody who is quick in their mind to speak, podcast would be the worst thing that ever happened to your brand. Yep. All right. So what are your values? What are you actually good at yep. that you can live throughout every single day? And that becomes who you get known for. I like it. Yep. Because you cannot just be a one click wonder and expect people to triple stumble and fall beating a path to your door. That's like a rhyme. I should write that. I like that. One hit, <laughs> one click wonder. I love it. You know, there's one hit wonders where people just come up with an album and, yep, yep, and, yep. and, and they go about saying, yeah, I'm a starving artist. Yes, yep. because you haven't created anything. That's right. You haven't created a strong enough brand. Absolutely. Yep. Simple as that. So obviously, first step is to identify what your strengths are and what you're actually going to be able to commit to for the long term. For the rest of your life. Yep, absolutely. And what else can we do? Once you've gotten that, ask people that are around you to verify that. Because we might think certain things of ourselves or we might not. Yep. But the people that love us and respect us might have a totally different idea of what it is that you're good at. Mm -hmm. So this is very confronting. What you would what you would want to do is really get people that are really close to you yep. and get them to help you define who you are. Yep. Even I, I'm sorry, this is a second Jesus reference, but it's, it's, it's <laughs> so easy. Jesus came in and asked people, who do people say I am? Uh huh. Interesting. All right. Yep. Oh, good stuff. So you go out there and ask your peeps, who do people say Darren is? Yep. Who do people say Prosper is? Yep. And that's, a really, you, that's a really really good point because a lot of the time we might think we're great at something, but we're actually perceived in the exact opposite way to our friends and, and family in the public. And that's not, not really going to help us create a strong brand. So that's a really good point. You need validation. Absolutely. And once that, it doesn't mean you have to follow through with that, but at least now you've got third party yes validation that this is how they see you and it's easy for people to consume or to you know um resonate with something that they feel like connects with them gotcha gotcha now that might be a little bit confronting for a lot of people mm -hmm. you might have been in business for a long time the one thing that you can easily do is go into your testimonials Good. find out what people actually say you are good at Yep. What, what do they want to come back for? And what would they pay you money for? Very good. Very good advice. I like that, Prosper. Very, very good advice. Great stuff. And in your testimonials, then you now start looking at themes. Do people love my attention to detail? Do yep. people love my punctuality? Do yep. people love my honesty, my integrity? And then you just amplify that through the content that you put out there. Do they, do they like my, um, my efficiency? Do they like my creativity? Do they like my um, strategies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Absolutely. Yesterday on the, on the call, all right, I heard somebody say they have never seen somebody who is so organized um, in terms of a podcast. And I second that. Oh, All right. Okay. So now you want to take that as part of the values that you portray about this podcast. Love and it, it becomes, it becomes a brand, you know, pillar that we are one of the most organized podcasts you would ever come on because nobody wants their time wasted. And I'm being very mindful of the people that are watching right now. If we've got people and you can see who's, who's checking in, please just, you know, acknowledge them to, to thank them for taking their time because they could have been doing something else right now. Absolutely. So let's do that right now. So everybody out there, thank you, Prosper. Prosper and I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to us here. And, you know, again, you could have been doing other things, but if you're listening to us, we really appreciate it. And we're trying to, get, we're trying to give you as much value as we can to help you on your journey through the rest of the day. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So when, when we did this with an accounting firm. All right. So they came to us and they were really trying to find out what their message market, um, you know, um, relevance was. <clears throat> and we did this. We looked at their testimonials. Their message was directed towards businesses. So they were looking at um, helping small to medium businesses with the bass and, um, you know, all, all, all the takes, takes. Yeah. 
you know, financial year and all that financial thing. year stuff that happens with businesses and what, what not. Okay. But guess what? Most of the people that were writing testimonials, um, you know, were saying and were, what was it? These people were teachers that had stayed with this company for more than 10 years. So teachers know they're going to be in, 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 a, in a job for pretty much the rest of their life. Yep. All right. So they don't want a thing like tax to be, because it's a constant thing. It's needed every single time yep. to be a bone of contention. So they just want to put and get plug into an accountant that's going to look after them for the rest of their tenure and work. Yep. So Absolutely. a lot of these teachers were the ones that were saying, thank you so much. Oh my God. You know, it makes it so easy. We never really even noticed when text time is here because you guys are on the ball. Yep. But it. guess what their message was talking to businesses that are not going to be listening to who they actually serve as a person. It's very, very true. So can you see that missed opportunity whereby yep. they could have disconnect? Just been... Yep. Absolutely. So Take, take time to find out from the people. Yes, we might have ideas of who we are or ideas of who we are not, but let's get the validation um, you know, of other people just so that they would then support us in the future because people will always support a wall that they helped to build. Perfect. Yep, absolutely. Oh, I like that. People will always support a wall that they helped to build. I love that one, Prosper. You're just coming up with some beauties today. <laughs> <laughs> so now once people have done that, obviously at some point they have to start using marketing and branding mark content to really start amplifying their brand and connecting with their audience and growing their audience. And that's obviously what you do as well in your, in your agency. Yep. Great. Yeah. So we have heard the statement that content is king. Definitely. Ah. All right. And, and then what we're doing right now is, is, is creating content. Yep. All right. Yep. And the one so thing just I'm for everybody out there, we're creating content that is going to be able to um, give our audience value and build our brand along the way. That's what we're doing. So we're building the brand through content. Exactly. Yep. All right. And what happens when people come to the internet is they learn something which means they're educated or they're entertained yep. or they buy something. True. All right. And for all of these things to happen, people need to be engaged. Yep. People need to at least be aware of the existence of that thing that you are talking about. That's right. And like you say, providing value, we get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace. Definitely 100. Let's, I'll say that again. We get paid in proportion, in direct proportion to the value we bring to the marketplace. That's another one. Exactly. So once people have an understanding that you are the person that's a resource and not just a salesperson who is trying to peddle their goods. Yeah. Or close a deal. And just close, you know, yeah, because hard close. There you go. And off we go. Because people like buying stuff. That's right. But they don't like being sold to. Absolutely. And if you're not giving value and if you're not giving them permission to really utilize that content for their lives to be better, yep. no one has time for that. Nope. Especially so, in this world. Absolutely. So, so what we're doing now, you know, we, 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 we want to make sure that that message resonates, that message is helpful, and that message is going to make someone's life better. Then it's easy for that message to be amplified, right? Through methodologies like this. Yep. So if you are just a high sounding nothing, yep. all right, you will get caught up. Yep. Because there's no authenticity in what you're talking about. If I was there's no, reading- There's no substance behind it. Absolutely. So if I was reading, off of a script right now, I would have been caught off guard with some of the questions you're asking. Definitely. This is coming from time effort that has come together with what you are creating so that we can create something that would outlast us. Definitely. And so as you say, it's authentic. This is what you live and breathe every day and have been living and breathing. And that's why people will trust you and like you because it's authentic and it's based on experience. And it's built and done daily. Yeah, daily. And da consistency is the key. 
you just don't take a shower and that's that's it <laughs> all right? That's right you just don't take one shower and you then you don't just it. brush your teeth once a year you do it and then that's every it day. And you have day. to do every single day piece by piece brick by brick that's how we build that wall we're talking about yep i love it absolutely and obviously you're in your with what you do you do that through uh, digital um, marketing as well as search engine optimization because they're slightly two different things, aren't they? Absolutely. Those are, yeah, you're right about that. Those are two different things. Now, all of this might sound very overwhelming to somebody who is not well-versed with, with, with how it all works. Now, the way we help our clients to do their marketing and so that they can avoid that overwhelm that I'm talking about is we help them find the right market, right? For their service or product. Yep. All right. And then once we have found that market, we try and create a resonating message. Yep. All right. And then once we've found that resonating message, we now choose a media that they are comfortable in. Just like we are using a podcast right now, both of us are extroverts. We, yep. we, 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 we talk, we, we're very good. And even though English is not my first language, I'm trying. Oh, right? man, you're, then, <laughs> <laughs> you're fantastic. You're right? better, you're but, better than me, Prosper. Oh, I'll, take, I'll take that as a compliment. It's years and years. All right? So that by itself, I might not be good at writing. Okay? But we could always transcribe this video into a blog post that's right so we don't need to major in things that we're not good at that's why there's always um other people that can help us that's why i've got a team around me and like i said you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands full yep. so a lot of people try to do everything and try to be everything to everyone yep. first of it. all everyone is not your customer yep 100 percent and then second of all, if you are going to try and be everything to everyone, then you're going to be nothing to a lot of people. Yep. So try and find out what you're really good at, how you can consistently say that message in a way that any person that's listening at that particular moment, because they always, there's always somebody hearing you for the first time. 100. And it usually takes eight consecutive times. Yep up until somebody really, really gets to know, like, and trust who you are and then start paying attention. hundred percent. And you know, even with your marketing, you might have to put down, put out a post, the same post or a similar post 10, 20 times before someone actually says, Oh, now I know what they do. Oh, okay. I understand. That's Absolutely. just how it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Because every time somebody is in, engaging with your content for the first time, you're starting their cycle. Yep. And especially now where we are so bombarded with information, uh, yep. tweets, uh, TikToks, all of that stuff, yep. for you to be relevant, your message has to be consistent. Your message has to resonate to that minimum viable audience. Yep. Don't true. try and reach out to everybody in Australia because they don't care. Yep. All right? All right? But try and reach out to those few people that can now, this is a very bad analogy based on the scenario, but that can contract the idea virus that you are trying to pass on to the world. Yep. So the more those little people sneeze, they're sending messages out to the world on your behalf, whereby you're leveraging that yes. and you're no longer expanding yourself telling people to look at me, look at me. You now have all of those sneezes that are out there spreading your ideas. Exactly. You're, you're building a, you're building advocates and you're building loyal salespeople that are working for you because they are so passionate about what you do. They tell everybody else. Absolutely. So like we said, right from the start, arm people with what to say about who you are, what you do and how you can solve their problems. And do it consistently because the, the any given moment, a person might be listening to you for the very first time. Yep, Abs so true. And, and all it takes is just that one moment of inspiration that makes them your follower and your customer forever and your advocate. 
but you just have to catch them at the right time. And how do we do that? By being consistent every single day so nobody gets left out. Absolutely. You see, we're the most documented generation. Yeah, wow. All right? Even though you're trying to be private, like, let me tell you something. We are, if anyone really wants to, they would know what you're up to, what you had for breakfast and what you, your personal mission is. That's right. Because all of that stuff is available. Definitely. So why not curate the kind of stuff that you want people to, to look at? Because as human beings, right, we are pattern seeking, um, you know, um, you know, humans, you know, yep. mechanisms. Yep. We're pattern seeking. I, I want us to try something right now. Now, does your chair go around? Does your chair sweep? Uh, yeah, it spins around. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I want you, <laughs> Darren, I want you to, to spin around and tell me how many yellow things you can see in your room right now. Two. Okay. W what, what and what? I think I saw uh, the, the uh, painting that I've got in the back. Are uh, you cheating? You're looking. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the little intercom is a little bit yellow. Absolutely. And just look, look, look to your side and see, look at your mic. Yeah, and my, that's, that's, yeah, that's yellow as well. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, but before I mentioned the color yellow, your, your, your brain was not looking and seeking out anything yellow, right? That's right, exactly. Right? But when I mention it, I bet all you're seeing right now is your mouthpiece, your microphone. That's right. Yep. Exactly. So that's called the reticular activated system. Yep, I've heard of it. All right? Our brains, when we tell them what to focus on, they go specifically for that. 100%. So if you operate, put out content, your authenticity is really directing people at aspects of you that you want them to focus on, I promise you that is what people will focus on. Nobody will go on digging for things that are not warranted from, because nobody has time. Exactly right. Nobody has the time. They want, they want to take exactly what you've given them. They've got to believe it as, long as, they, as long as it's substantial. And yes. then they, they, they roll with that. That's it. Absolutely. So with that in mind, what is it about your brand, about your business that you can actually get to stand for something? How can you actually support people on their journey in order for them to now focus on you as the resource mm -hmm. that will help them arrive to where they are going? Yeah. How can you help them allay with whatever fears they might have? Because nobody trusts anyone right now we're supposed to stand 1.5 meters away from people even if they're your loved ones but if you're seen in, in public you, that's already yep. wrong. Sending, sending the wrong message yep okay. absolutely so so how do you how do you help people justify their failures because you have everyone is trying to go somewhere but you're already there and people are trying to model that behavior so how are you showing them and how are you helping them by actually helping them that is what creates a personal brand because right. nobody nobody has time to wait until you have figured it all out no and that's and that's why creating content is so important absolutely content only only amplifies who you are yep content only gives people some sort of direction of what yellow things to look at with this person or with that brand definitely and as you said earlier if your strength is re the strength that you think you have is actually true. Then that will align and to building a very strong personal brand. Yep. And then you can be, do, have whatever you want in this whole wide world. I uh, love it. And, and Prosper is a perfect example. He's done it from the first time he met his teacher back in Zimbabwe to now look what he's achieved because he's set his mind to it. He put a strategy together and he went for it. And he never held back. Great stuff. I love it. And Prosper, now I love, and the audience loves case studies. Maybe give us a case study or two or an example of how you've worked with a business or a person to build a strong personal brand, how you went about that process and what the result was. Obviously being confidential with who the person is or the brand, but I just love to walk us through your content digital strategy or your SEO strategy or how you worked to build that brand. 
Great stuff. Okay, so I think the biggest, biggest case study that we're not going to be hiding details or squibbling <laughs> or, or trying to, to gray out certain areas is more. Okay, so when I came into Australia, I had nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams. Yeah. And the first thing that I did was really try and to uh, be of value because you, you could try and, 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 and meet people or be friends with somebody. But if you've got nothing to offer, that doesn't last. Okay. Same. So what was the first thing that I did? I had to look for a job. Okay. Yep. I came, like I said, I had nothing, no friends, no connections, nothing of that sort. The first job that I did was work in a restaurant. Yep. Good. Okay. While working in a restaurant, you know, I wanted to connect with the people that I was working with. And it was so difficult because everyone is just busy, you know, frying, you know, doing whatever they're doing. And I went out to see if that restaurant had a Facebook page so that I could see who is who and who is not. Nice. Back then, obviously, that wasn't important. And that restaurant didn't have one. Right. What so, year was that? What year was that about? Uh, we're talking 2011. 2011. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that restaurant didn't have a, um, a Facebook page. Right. They only had, um, you know, I think if you remember back in the time, there was Zomato, Urban Spoon yes, and all those yes, things, yes. right? Where people would leave reviews. And that was the perception that they had about the internet, that the internet is just a bad place for reviews. Exactly. Long story short. So I went in and I took it upon myself to create a Facebook page Correct. for the place. And nobody told me and I used the person's name and I thought it was cool. <laughs> but that, that was possibly the worst thing I could have done for this Ligon restaurant in Melbourne. And the owner was so pissed off of me. Hey. I was three days. Wow. Exactly. Because w what was happening there was I was opening him up to the world of hurt, of yep. reviews. And he didn't want that. Yeah. So he ordered me to take it down. Who did this? Take it down. <laughs> I did ask you. Oh my that goodness. was that was me then. Nothing, and and and, and I, I had no one to turn to. Yep. But I turned that all around. By I didn't know back then. So after my suspension, I was called into the office, and then he actually sat down with me and he's like, "Wait a minute, you don't have to delete that message, that that Facebook page, because there was two people that had already left two reviews that were saying, oh my God, we came and had a really good ah. place. So that's sort of how I started, because he said, leave the kitchen, now you can come and work on the website. Yeah, now you're a marketing guy, no more kitchen. <laughs> exactly. So that changed who I was and the personal brand of what I was doing back then. Yeah. And I then got a few other people, you know, restaurants that he was bragging to. And he's like, oh, I've got a guy who's doing this and he can do it for you. And I actually started to get paid to be on Facebook. Yeah, love right? what a great Long story short, I didn't stay there that long. I then, back, back in the time I had very long hair and I went in and I started to join the modeling circuit because that was also another way to connect with people. Yeah. I went there, I even did a modeling course when, I, when, 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 when it was still prestigious. After doing that, I got signed by a Melbourne um, fashion agency. Wow. All right. And I was doing the walks and everything else. I've even done, um, you know, um, I've even done work for Maya. You know, really? Wow, well, of course. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and I've passed on the baton to my little girls. And that's why you've seen she's also a model we came at. Oh, fantastic. That's great. All right. So while I was doing that, I realized that a lot of models were not getting paid mm -hmm. for their um, services. They were just, you know, you know, you know, in exchange for exposure for and exposure. Uh, yeah. And, and publicity and, and opportunity. Yeah. And then I created a platform where models would go in and connect with photographers and photographers can connect with Instagram brands that are looking for people to model their products. Very smart. That was clearly the beginning of influencer marketing before it was even called that. Yep. So I created a platform and well, nobody's doing that. It was called iconic images group. We would meet and we were doing networking and all that stuff. I became known as the model guy. Love it. And while I was doing that, I realized that a lot of these people that were taking these photos were not doing anything to market the exposure of these ladies that they were promising. Mm -hmm. So I then went on and started the very beginning of what my agency has become. It started off with social media and we've rebranded. Now, 
we are creating tools that are literally changing the industry. Wow. So with every level that I have been going through, my brand from the people that knew me five years ago would not recognize me right now based on who I've become and what I'm creating. So I'm also helping a few other people along the way, small to medium businesses to really harness who they are and grow with that and let their audiences accept who they have become I love it. by making sure that every single piece of content is relevant to that minimum viable audience that they're trying to attract. Sensational. And do you have a particular niche now that you work with or do you, are you happy to work with anybody? Great stuff. So the niche that we work with is people that are absolutely doing great work out there. All right. We can't specifically say we work with lawyers, consultants, or doctors, because in my line of work, if I'm working with doctors alone, then I'm competing with myself in the, in the, in the, in Google there. Yep. So it's not going to make a difference, but amongst um, each um, industry, there's usually the top 10% of the people. Gotcha. We try and just work with those people across the board. The reason being we can get results for them and we make sure that their work is being appreciated and people out there can definitely find the customers that they're working for. Now, yeah. the clarity I now have for what I'm doing is basically, I basically, or part of my job is not just to sell SEO services. I have to create demand for really good search results out there. Mm -hmm. All right. So when people understand that they can rely on Google to get to wherever they want to in life, because Google is not the end point. It's a way to go somewhere. That's right. That makes whatever we do relevant and also amplifies the work of our customers. Mm -hmm. And so how do you create that demand? It's, it's, it's a long process. A lot of work. <laughs> so, by creating demand is you teach people what to want. Uh -huh. I can give you a specific example. If your, um, your work revolves around selling a mobile phone, mm -hmm. you want the market to start demanding better quality photos, better quality connection. You want the market to start expecting better quality, whatever apps that come on the phone and the mm -hmm. only place they can get them is through what you are creating as a product. I love it. So, so once you start having the market demanding better service, better everything else from their service providers, guess who they're going to come uh, knocking and say, hey, we need somebody that can help us to connect to these people that already want certain things out there. Perfect. So, perfect. so my business really helps instigate all of that in the marketplace. We've got tools that are out there that are generating that demand. And we're just sitting here waiting for the people to knock on our doors and say, Hey, we heard about this. I love it. And when you talk about that, who comes to mind for me, Steve jobs, because Steve jobs was the absolute master in creating um, interest in products that didn't even exist. He created markets. He was a master educator of new, new trends and new dreams that, you know, for example, the iPod, uh, the sh was it the iPod shuffle that came out first? first it, was, it was just the iPod, 1000 yeah. songs in your pocket. The iPod was incredible. And he just kept on creating new products and creating markets for new products that never even existed because he went then and built the products. So he was the master in what you're saying. Absolutely. All right. And, 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 and <laughs> he, I modeled my business around, Steve Jobs and how he has created yep. Think Different. Yep, fantastic. Because any, anyone out there with a pair of sweatpants and a laptop can call themselves an entrepreneur. Yes. But how many have a personal brand that people would come and knock on your house's door and say, hey, I'm the one you were talking about all this time? Definitely, definitely. Prosper, sensational. So if people want to get in touch with you to find out more about what you do and how you can help them, What's the best way for them to do that? Great stuff. I've worked far too hard in the SEO space that I want to believe that if you type in Prosper or anything <laughs> to do with Live Long Digital or anything of the things that we spoke about today, if anything really, really stuck with you, I've probably written about it. 
or I've probably spoken about it. Yep. All right. But Live Long Digital is the brand company um, mm -hmm. that we're creating, even though we've got 18 other different little businesses yep. that, um, you know, are they creating for and relating to customers in certain niches. Love it. So Live Long Digital, just type that in or type in Prosper Tarovinga and you'll find everything you need to find. Somehow you end up to what I've created, so what I want you to see. And, and I love the name, you know, it, it's perfectly in line with what you've spoken about before, the way that you chose that name as Live Long Digital. It's a brand that lasts forever. I Absolutely. It. Live long and prosper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prosper, man, thank you so much for being on the show. You've been absolutely insightful, full of energy, very entertaining, very, very uh, intelligent answers and questions and given us so much value um, that I'll definitely be re-listening to this episode myself because I've learned a lot from you. But I always like to ask my guests to leave us with one or two thoughts at the end of the day, at the end of the podcast episode. What should we think about in terms of our branding? What should we do? Just little takeaways that can help us move on our journey straight away. Absolutely. So like I said, everything happens piece by piece. There is no overnight success. Mm -hmm. So if it seems like it's not working right now, look at what you, your values are. What would that look like in the next five years? And then just reverse engineer from there because right. you... All right. You cannot connect the dots looking, um, you know, forwards. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. Yep. So put yourself in a position to say, what does Darren soul and suspended media look like in five years? Who do I want to have interviewed? How do I want people to know who I am? And once you know that framework, once you know that framework, all you got to do is go ahead and fulfill that. Because when you're going somewhere, you don't put the address of where you are. You put the address of where you're going. Going, exactly. And then the GPS self-navigates to where you are. I love it. So basically, we might be going through COVID right now. But if you're five years ahead and you're planning your, your branding and who you want to be and what you're creating, this might just be a speed hump on your way to whatever it is that you want. That's right. And it might, and it might even teach you a couple of things along the way that might have helped you as well. Absolutely. So look at who you are becoming, not who you have become. Yeah. That is very, very crucial. And once you know where you're going, you would know that this was just a speed, a speed hump on your way to, to, to Fantastic. Success. I love it. What a great, great way to end the show. Anything else you want to leave us with or? Oh, I really want to thank you for this time. You did oh. mention that this was insightful, but let me tell you something. If you didn't create this, if you didn't ask the questions, none of this would have happened. So on behalf of Sally, who's listening to this in 2025, how are you doing, by the way? Thank <laughs> you for creating something that a lot of people would, um, you know, look forward to in, for the rest of their life. Uh, it's because of you a few other people are not going to give up. So thank you for that. Thank you, Prosper. I really appreciate that. And thank you for such incredible content, incredible value, sharing your story with us because it's an inspiration. And for everybody out there, I hope that you've learned as much as I have. And anybody who's got any questions for Prosper, type in Prosper or Live Long Digital. He's the man and he would love to help you. So well done, everybody. Have a great day. And we'll be back very, very soon for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast.